item to size sphere. And in this video, I'm going to show you how elements can make compounds and mixtures and to see the difference between the two. The elements we're going to be using is iron and sulphur. The compound that we will make would be iron sulphide. And I want to be able to show you the difference between iron sulphide as a compound and iron and sulphur as the elements. First of all, we're going to start off by looking at the two elements, iron and sulphur. So as you can see, iron is a shiny silver metal and sulphur in a powder form at the moment is this beautiful bright yellow colour. So the two elements look very differently from each other. So if I just zoom out a little bit, there we go. What will happen when I mix the iron and sulphur together to create a mixture? I'm just gonna pour a little bit of iron on here in the form of iron filings, just so it mixes easier with the powder. Take a spatula and if I mix them, these two elements have now formed a mixture, which means they should still be able to be separated. At this moment in time, a chemical reaction has not occurred. So I still have iron and sulfur as two individual elements, but they're all just mixed up in a bit of a mess. If I tried to separate them, I should successfully be able to do that. So we know that iron is magnetic. There you go, whoops. <laughs> Get off, there we go. Um, so if I'm able to extract the iron filings out of the sulfur using a magnet, the two elements are then going to be separated again. I'm just going to put a little bit of tissue paper around my magnet so that uh, I can get the iron filings off easy again. But as you can see, beautiful. Most of those iron filings have now been separated out of the iron and sulfur mixture. So just put that to one side for a second. On a molecular level, what is happening is the iron and sulfur elements, so the atoms that make the elements, are completely mixed. There is no chemical reaction between the two. So now we're going to demonstrate what happens when a chemical reaction takes place between iron and sulfur and how that compound looks very different from the mixture that I just separated there. So this here is the iron and sulfur mixture. Both of them are a powder mixed together, but there's no chemical reaction happen yet to turn them into the compound iron sulfide. To do that, you need to apply some heat to initiate the chemical reaction. So I'm going to put this into a Bunsen flame now, and I want you to pay attention to see what the chemical reaction looks like. Okay, here we go. So you can see that beautiful orange glow happening right now. That's a sign a chemical reaction is taking place. Okay, just heat it a little bit more just to be sure that everything has reacted. Yep. And there you have it. Iron sulfide, a compound made from the two elements, iron and sulfur. Now I need to be able to get it out of the glass so you can see the appearance of this newly made compound. 
So I broke open the test tube and the iron sulfide compound came out. And as you can see, it's a dull gray material, not shiny like the iron, not yellow like the sulfur, because now a new material has been made. And so there are new properties. The last property to test is the magnetic ability. So I have my magnet. And as you saw earlier, I used that to extract the iron from the mixture. Now there's the test for the compound. And as you can see, it does still retain a little bit of a magnetic property. It's really hard to get this compound right, uh, but it is not shooting to the magnet as the iron filings did before. So just to summarize, your iron element and your sulfur element whoops, can be mixed together to make your mixture. So that's what a mixture looks like on a molecular level in a very simplistic form. But for the compound, you've actually have a bond now between the iron and the sulfur. And that was created in the chemical reaction that was initiated by some heat to create the compound iron sulfide.